these cities and buildings were designed to remain hidden from the public eye. From secret underground bunkers to concealed subterranean cities, these places are shrouded in secrecy. Join me as I unveil 15 hidden cities and buildings from around the world. Number 15. Guyaju. Guyaju, tucked away in the craggy cliffs of China's Shaanxi province, is a captivating marvel that provides more mysteries than answers when it comes to our past. These ancient caves carved right into the rock are a living relic of history, dating back over 1400 years to the Tang Dynasty. What makes this place truly remarkable is its hidden nature. For centuries, it remained concealed from the outside world, shrouded in secrecy like a well-guarded treasure. It was only in the 20th century that these caves were stumbled upon by explorers and archaeologists, unveiling a frozen world in time. The people who called Guyaju home were resourceful and resilient. They adapted to their harsh surroundings using the natural rock formations to create cozy living spaces. These dwellings served as both homes and fortifications, offering refuge from invaders and the region's extreme weather. These ancient peoples had bedrooms, kitchens, and storage areas carved into the rock. Their ingenious ventilation systems attested to that ability to thrive in those conditions, and proved that while they lived long ago, they're not so different from modern-day societies. So all of this begs the question, who exactly lived here? Well, no one quite knows for sure, but there are plenty of theories. Some say the inhabitants were nomadic farmers and herders who used the caves as a refuge. Others say that because of the Buddhist carvings and inscriptions found throughout, monks or religious hermits may have inhabited or used these caves. At the end of the day, the only people who know the truth are the ones who were there. Number 14. Mesa Verde Known for the dwellings of the people whom archaeologists once called the Anasazi, Mesa Verde National Park in Montezuma County, Colorado is home to some of the world's most beautiful sandstone structures. The 12th and 13th century rectangular homes and circular subterranean religious structures called Kivas of the Pueblo peoples include the famous Cliff Palace, a maze of 23 ceremonial kivas and dozens of rooms. These pink, yellow, and red plastered dwellings are shut behind windowless walls under a great overhanging cliff. They are architectonic, squeezing dark rooms together to make an easily defensible fort that uses the cliff's natural curves as a guide. The facts surrounding who built Mesa Verde are still a mystery, but that only adds to the allure of this place. They appear to be two different styles and sizes of kivas, so there may have been two distinct periods of building, guided by different groups of religious elites. The total effect is stunning, especially to those accustomed to separated homes and cities laid out on a grid under an open sky. For some reason, these dwellings were inhabited for only a century or so before some sort of disaster struck. Likely theories include a horrific drought that made life in the arid mesa lands unsustainable. Rather than disappearing into thin air, it's now thought that the early Pueblo peoples migrated south into Arizona and New Mexico, where they continued to refine their building practices and where their descendants live today. Number 13. The Bandiagara Escarpment the Bandiagara Escarpment cuts right through the hot and dusty lands of the Sahel in Mali for over a hundred miles. In itself, Bandiagara is a wonder of nature. The cliffs rise over 1,500 feet in the air in places and range in geographic diversity from desert to cascading waterfalls plummeting onto the plains. However, almost more impressive than the landscape are the Dogon homes carved into the escarpment. Although a range of people have lived in the area for over 600 years, the Dogon people have made southern Mali their home, covering everything from simple rectangular homes into the cliff walls to detailed mosques made out of mud and sticks. The entire concept of their village is stunning, as homes hang from the cliffs that defy all natural bounds of the traditional city. Some of the villages can hardly be seen as they blend in seamlessly with the rocky cliffs. Others are only noticeable from their thatched roofs, protruding from the sand and rock. There are 30 Dogon villages in total across the escarpment and a multitude of sites, aside from the houses. The landscape has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1989, and much of the Dogon's original cultural traditions still exist, including mask rituals and cave shrines. Visitors to the region can also stay directly in the Dogon villages along the escarpment, allowing for a truly unique, hostile experience. Number 12. Kendovan Tucked away in the remote northwest corner of Iran is a village where residents live as modern-day cave dwellers. Current residents of Kendovan, a tourist village in the province of East Azerbaijan, claim that their village is more than 700 years old. It was created, they say, when those fleeing the advancing Mongol army took to the caves to hide. The homes are known as Karan in the local Turkic dialect, a word that roughly translates as the plural of beehive. 
The kind of on village has an unusual look that resembles a gigantic termite colony more than it does traditional caves. The structures were formed by ash and debris from Mount Sahan when the now dormant volcano erupted sometime in the last 11,000 years. And then over the course of thousands of years, the ash hardened and was carved out by the elements. In the surrounding region, the ash blanketed the land in a more traditional pattern. Over the years, the people of the village have expanded their residences. Now, most cave dwellings range from two to four stories complete with living areas, a storage room, and an animal shelter. They have porches, windows, doors, and stairwells carved into the rock. The people of Kandavan, although old, are just like us and like all the same creature comforts. The caves are some of the most energy-efficient homes on Earth, which is saying a lot, with the rock providing adequate insulation to keep the interiors comfortable throughout the long cold season. The homes also remain cool in the summer, and all of this begs the question of what we can learn from the people who lived so long ago, yet seem to have figured it all out. Number 11. Vardzia Monastery Dug out of solid rock, the Vardzia Monastery looks like it was taken directly from the stories of old. In reality, it's a cave palace and monastery built by the Georgians in the Caucasus for their fabled queen Tamar. In the late 1100s, the medieval kingdom of Georgia was resisting the onslaught of the Mongol hordes. Queen Tamar ordered the construction of this underground sanctuary in 1185, and the digging began, carving into the side of the Erusheli mountain. All of this was done by hand and using rudimentary tools. In the end, this underground fortress extended 13 levels and contained 6,000 apartments, a throne room and a large church with an exterior bell tower. It's assumed that the only access to this stronghold was via a hidden tunnel whose entrance was near to the banks of the Mikvari River. The outside slope of the mountain was covered with fertile terraces, suitable for cultivation for which the intricate systems of irrigation were designed. With such defenses, natural and man-made, the place must have been all but impregnable to human forces. All good things, though, must come to an end. Though safe from the Mongols, Mother Nature was a different story altogether. In 1283, only a century after its construction, a devastating earthquake literally ripped the place apart. It shattered the mountain slope and destroyed more than two-thirds of the city, exposing the hidden innards of the remainder. Today, the place is maintained by a small group of zealous monks. About 300 apartments and halls remain visitable, and in some tunnels, the old irrigation pipes still bring in drinkable water. Number 10. Puktal Gompa The Puktal Gompa, cradled in the remote Zanskar Valley of Ladakh in India, is a living testament to the resilience of monks who carved their sanctuaries into these cliffs. The origins of this extraordinary Buddhist monastery are believed to reach back to ancient times when monks sought solitude in this hidden gorge, drawn by the spiritual energy that permeated the rugged landscape. As centuries passed, the importance of this place grew, especially during the Middle Ages, when Buddhism thrived in the region. Monks recognized the spiritual significance of this place, and they worked tirelessly to expand and refine their sanctuary. The cave complex cut into the rock face became a symbol of devotion and a repository of sacred knowledge. The Renaissance period witnessed the monastery's rise in prominence, with the advancement of Buddhism and the growing interest in culture and spirituality. Puktal Gompa attracted royal patrons and curious travelers alike. Pilgrims and tourists ventured into this remote valley inspired by the growing fascination with humanism and Eastern culture. In the late 18th century, Puktal Gompa came under the influence of larger empires, just as the Vialichka salt mine was taken over by Austria. This change brought organizational improvements and technological advancements to the monastery, and it was during this era that the concept of general tourism took root, drawing visitors from across the region to witness the sacred beauty hidden within. In the early 1990s, as salt production ceased in Vialitska, the focus shifted to preservation. Similarly, at Puktal Gomta, the practice of Buddhism and the preservation of the monastery's unique heritage took precedence over isolation. The shift emphasized the importance of maintaining the sanctuary's spiritual and cultural significance. Number 9. Meteora Monastery The Orthodox Church has always had a knack for picking spectacular locations for its sacred buildings. It would seem that the more isolated or the higher up these structures became, the safer they were from persecutors and the closer they were to the heavens. Meteora is no exception. Even if it weren't the location for the second most important monastery complex in Greece, Meteora would still be a site worthy of awe. In the foothills of the Pindus Mountains above the central Greek plains of Thessaly is a series of geological wonders that stick out from the ground. 
The name Meteora means suspended in the air or suspended rocks, and it's appropriate. Wind, water, and the harsh temperatures have carved out a series of gigantic sandstone pillars, some of them hundreds of meters high. The first hermit monks appeared in this area as early as the 11th century. However, the monastery complex only began to flourish after the Ottoman conquest of the Byzantine Empire in 1453. Due to persecution and concern about the Ottomans, Orthodox monks sought refuge in increasingly remote locations. What better place to establish a monastery than in, as Meteora is sometimes translated, the heavens above? To gain access to the monastery, one originally had to climb a series of ladders tied together or dragged up by a large net. According to the monks, the ropes up to Meteora were only replaced when the Lord let them break. Today, steps have been carved into the rock and a bridge built from a nearby plateau. At its peak, the complex included 20 monasteries. However, only six of them remain today. Five are for men only, and the sixth is for women. Great Meteora is the largest and most often visited by tourists. Rusano is located on a relatively smaller rock, and this makes it an excellent point for spectacular photos of the Varla Monastery and the Metamorphosis Church. Number 8. Kuber Pedi Kuber Pedi is a mining town in southern Australia, which calls itself the opal mining capital of the world. The name comes across from the aboriginal term for boy's water hole, but the joke is that it actually means white man in a hole. While aboriginal people have long inhabited this area, miners first moved to Kuber Pedi in 1916 after the discovery of opal in the surrounding rocks. As a result of the intense heat, a number of miners living in the town have chosen to live underground either in the beginnings of the old mines or in purpose-built underground houses. This has continued, with much of the modern town being built underground. Among the local public buildings found underground are three churches, a bookstore, an art gallery, a bar, and hotel. Opals can be seen embedded in the walls of some of the hotel rooms. Now, the area doesn't support much life, and the first tree in the town was welded together from scrap iron. The metal tree can still be seen on a hill overlooking the town. The daytime temperatures of Kuber Pedi in the summer get so high that most sporting activities take place at night. Golf, played with glowing balls, is a popular pastime here. The town's unusual and bleak landscape, made even stranger by the mining efforts, has made it an attractive location for Hollywood. Kuber Pedi's even appeared in a number of movies like Pitch Black, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and Red Planet. One must be careful in Kuber Pedi, though. The area around the town is riddled with pits and caverns dug in search of opals. This is especially true at night when one's out playing a round of glowing golf. But what makes Kuber Pedi so unique and maybe a little fun is the fact that it isn't some ancient outpost. It's a modern-day subterranean haven. Moving on to number 7, Bialichka Salt Mine. The Vialichka salt mine in Poland is the epitome of the saying, salt of the earth. The beginnings of the current mine are believed to have been primitively excavated after the discovery of a rock salt deposit in ancient times. In the Middle Ages, salt became recognized as one of the most important staples in the food and preservation industry, leading to advancement of salt mining technology and further excavation. During the Renaissance, the mine was one of the largest business ventures in Europe, and it was around this time that royal tourists started to flock to the mine, lured there in part by the developing Renaissance taste for humanism and culture. By the late 18th century, Austria gained control of the mine and brought new forms of organization, as well as further technological advancements, many of which are responsible for the longevity of the mine. The birth of general tourism here occurred during the Austrian rule. In the early 1990s, the production of salt in the mine ceased. After the mine flooded, the importance of preservation was re-established. Despite the mine's remarkable history, it's the miners' artwork that brings over a million tourists to the salt mine each year. The miners slowly turned the mine from a dark cave into a majestic royal location. By the 19th century, giant salt crystal chandeliers lit the underground complex. Striking salt-carved monuments and reliefs decorated the chambers available to tourists, resulting in Europe-wide fame. In the early 1900s, the Kinga Chapel was formed, a chamber filled with large biblical reliefs. Nowadays, tourists from all over the world are guided through the bizarre labyrinthine tunnels of the mine, astonished by the beautifully detailed sculptures, chapels, and even a restaurant as they relive over a thousand years of salty history. Number 6. Uchisar 
Tucked away in the heart of Turkey's enchanting Cappadocia region lies Uchisar, a village that appears to blend into the natural scenery itself. This place, known as the Fortress of Cappadocia, effortlessly merges with the surreal landscape, showcasing a deep connection between culture and nature. The defining feature of the place is its towering volcanic rock formation, a creation sculpted over millennia by the relentless forces of wind and water. Carved into the soft rock is a network of caves and tunnels, forming a natural citadel that has, over centuries, sheltered a thriving community. What's intriguing is how Uchisar's architecture harmoniously coexists with the geography around it. The village's ancient inhabitants recognized the strategic value of the rock and ingeniously carved their homes, storerooms, and even places of worship into its facade. Stacked on top of one another, these caves have given this place a distinct appearance, earning it the nickname Castle Village. And like so many others, Uchisar holds a great level of complexity. A living, breathing, thriving society once inhabited these places, which are still complete with functional kitchens, living spaces, and unique pigeon houses, where pigeon droppings held great agricultural value. This village has borne witness to a succession of civilizations, from Byzantine to Ottoman rule, each contributing to that narrative. Its strategic perch atop the landscape made it an enticing prize for various empires, attracting invasions and conflicts throughout history. Its elevated position afforded residents an unrivaled panoramic view, aiding in the early detection of potential threats. The discovery of Uchisar in the modern era can be attributed to the explorers and archaeologists who ventured into Cappadocia in the 20th century. Their findings unveiled a world hidden within the rocks, shedding light on the ancient community that once thrived there. Number 5. Popa Kaunkalat Established and maintained by a hermit in the early 20th century, the Mount Popa Shrine and Monastery precariously sits 2,500 feet off the ground on a massive volcanic formation in central Myanmar. Climbing 777 steps from the base of the vertical pedestals takes you to a monastery honoring what has become known as the center of Nat spirit activity of the nation. In Buddhist traditions of Myanmar, Nats are spirits of humans that met tragic ends and are portrayed accordingly in shrines across the country. One of the most well-known of the 37 spirits in the shrine of Mount Popa is Kogi Kwa, who died from his wild lifestyle and alcohol abuse. As the patron saint of tramps and alcoholics, his shrine is often covered in bottles of whiskey. Due to the Nat activity in the shrine on Mount Popa, the area is known as the Mount Olympus of Myanmar. The shrine subsequently draws thousands of pilgrims each year, especially during full moon ceremonies two times per year, and non-religious visitors can enjoy panoramic views of the lush mountains, as well as the monkeys that live and beg for food around the monastery. There's an estimated 2,000 rhesus macaques living in the monastery today, and because of this, monkey poop is prevalent on the monastery steps. And to make matters worse, pilgrims and visitors are supposed to ascend the poop-riddled stairs barefoot. Consequently, a high number of people make their living cleaning up after the monkeys in exchange for a donation. And this fact has generated mixed feedback from the visitors to Mount Popa. Does it take away from the near-hidden monastery's authenticity? Maybe. Does it keep the shoes and bare feet clean and sanitary? Well, yes, definitely. Cleanliness is, after all, next to godliness. Number 4. Sigaria from far, far away, Sigaria doesn't seem like much. It's a massive geological feature sprouting up from the earth that quite literally stands out as a picturesque rock. But if you stopped there, you'd be dead wrong. An ancient stone fortress used by a king of Sri Lanka as a place to build his palace and hide from his brother's attacks, Sigaria, the lion rock, is often considered the eighth wonder of the world. It's situated in the central Matale district of Sri Lanka. This fortress is surrounded on all sides by the remnants of an extensive network of reservoirs and gardens. These gardens are believed to be some of the oldest landscaped gardens anywhere in the world. The lion staircase leading to the palace garden at the top of the rock is the most significant feature of this geological masterpiece. An intricate construction, the lion staircase is a tiled-covered walkway that emerges from the open mouth of the beast from which it takes its name and is built of brick and timber. The bricks surround the ancient limestone steps. Named a World Heritage Site by UNESCO, this rock is full of archaeological importance. The other primary features here that draw thousands of tourists each year is the surviving frescoes and other paintings. The few paintings that survive are the earliest examples of a Sri Lanka school of classical realism, which was fully formed by the 5th century when the paintings at Sigiriya were produced. There's also remains of paintings in some of the caves that are nestled at the foot of the giant rock. 
According to ancient texts, the entire rock fortress was built by King Kashyapa and, after his death, was used as a Buddhist monastery until the 14th century. Today, it is a popular destination and one of the first places added to Sri Lanka itineraries. Despite the ominous appearance, the climb is relatively accessible, meaning just about anyone can make it up there. Number 3. Aplisticha Located in eastern Georgia, Aplisticha, literally meaning the Lord's Fortress, is an abandoned rock-hewn town which once played an important role in Georgian history. The place was founded in the late Bronze Age around 1000 BC and continued to be inhabited until about 13th century AD. Between the 6th century BC and the 11th century AD, this place was one of the most important political and religious centers of pre-Christian Kartli, one of the predecessors of the Georgian state. Archaeologists have unearthed numerous temples and findings related to a sun goddess worshipped prior to the arrival of Christianity. When Christianity arrived in Georgia, the city lost importance in favor of the new centers of Christian culture, most notably Mesheta and Tbilisi. Nevertheless, life continued, Christian structures were built and for a short time Christianity and the old faith coexisted in the city. After the Arab conquest of the royal city of Tbilisi, the town's second heyday began. It became the residence of the kings of Kartli, during which the town grew to a size of around 20,000 people. When Tbilisi was recaptured in 1122, this place faced an immediate and rapid decline, culminated by the destruction of large parts of the city during the Mongol conquest in the 13th century and the subsequent abandonment of the rest of the town. This town can be divided into a lower, a central, and an upper area, covering an area of almost 40,000 square meters. The central area, which contains most of the rock-cut structures, is connected to the lower by a narrow tunnel. Most of those rock-cut structures are without any decorative elements, aside from some of the larger structures, which contain some stone carvings. At the top of the complex is a Christian stone basilica dating from the 10th century. The rock-cut structures here include a large hall, called Tamaras Darbazi, pagan places of sacrifice, dwellings, as well as functional buildings like a pharmacy, a bakery, a prison, and even an amphitheater. The rock-cut structures are connected by tunnels, while other tunnels are built as emergency escape routes. It is remarkable for the unique combination of styles from rock-cut cultures of the region, most notably from Cappadocia, modern Turkey, and northern Iran. Most of the unearthed artifacts can be seen at the National Museum in Tbilisi. Number 2. Elora Caves Religious devotion was not uncommon in ancient times, but tolerance was often much harder to come by. Happily for curious travelers and religious devotees alike, the caves at Elora offer a truly exceptional example of both. Covering an area of more than two kilometers in size, the Elora Caves are a massive and humbling tribute to faith and medieval-era workmanship in India. In fact, the term caves hardly does it justice. 34 Buddhist, Brahmanist, and Jainist temples in Elora, each painstakingly carved out of the mountainside, are filled with delicate works of art. Sculpted Buddhas and other religious figures abound, along with intricately carved images in the walls and decorative fixtures on the temples, but hardly common for something excavated out of solid rock, particularly using the tools and workforce available in the 5th through the 10th centuries when these temples were created. It is truly hard to believe that the temples are in fact vertically excavated out of stone. Many of them put many modern buildings to shame with their elaborate design, demonstrating both the strength of religious conviction that went into their creation as well as the highly skilled craftsmen who participated. But the delicate excavation isn't the only feature here at the Elora Caves that would be unlikely to be found in the modern era. The caves feature art, temples, and habitation spaces from three different religions, proving the level of tolerance and cooperation among the religious groups in India at the time of their creation. The three groups shared the space peacefully throughout centuries, unafraid to worship near idols of a competing religion, something that would still be remarkable today or in most other cultural eras for that matter. Indeed, the tolerance is likely not just a nice angle to the story of these temples, it's likely exclusively due to the remarkable cooperation amongst religious beliefs that the caves became so elaborate and impressive, something any one group may not have been able to accomplish alone and undoubtedly more grand than they otherwise would have been. Number 1. Shicheng, the Lion City The Lion City lies beneath the tranquil waters of Qiandao Lake in Zhejiang Province in China. The story is a remarkable testament to the resilience of human heritage and the lengths taken to preserve history. Submerged beneath 130 feet of water, this ancient city remains hidden from view, a silent time capsule waiting to reveal its secrets. Shicheng's history dates back over 1300 years to the Tang and Song dynasties, 
Established during the Eastern Han Dynasty, it thrived as a center of politics, economics, and culture. The strategic location here, surrounded by mountains and rivers, made it a hub for trade and commerce along the Yangtze River. However, Xicheng's fate took a dramatic turn in the 1950s, when a decision was made to build the Xenon River Hydro Power Station, which would submerge the ancient city beneath a man-made lake. The decision to flood Xicheng was a difficult one, and preservation efforts were undertaken to protect its treasures. It remained submerged for decades, hidden from sight, but not forgotten. Then, in 2001, Shi Cheng's existence was brought back into the spotlight when a team of divers rediscovered the lost city beneath the clear waters of Qiandao Lake. The city's pristine preservation astonished the world. What makes this place truly extraordinary is its impeccable state of preservation. The sunken city features well-preserved structures, including archways, houses, streets, and even delicate wood carvings. The wooden beams and detailed stonework remain remarkably intact thanks to the lake's cold, oxygen-deprived waters, which have kept the city's treasures safe from decay and erosion. These underwater treasures have become a mecca for archaeologists, historians, and of course, divers. Explorations have unveiled stunning sculptures, intricate architectural details, and remnants of daily life from a bygone era. These discoveries have provided valuable insights into the history, the culture, and the artistry of the Tang and Song dynasties. In recognition of its historical significance, Xicheng was declared a protected site, and there have been discussions about the possibility of creating an underwater museum to showcase its wonders to the world. While access to it remains limited, there's a growing interest in preserving and studying this remarkable time capsule. Watch our obscure playlist for more top 15 videos about the more obscure subjects in our world. Thank you to our channel members.